you're having a bad day, consider his wisdom as a blessing. Your day will rock. Perhaps you'll break even. So welcome a kind, humble, thoughtful friend, co-host, and human being. Last name Tobolowski. First name Stephen. <laughs> Stephen, welcome, my friend. Oh my God, Avi. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. That. <sighs> you rock. I I am I'm stunned. I'm still lost with the theater and silence has meaning. I, I. Yeah. I'm I'm lost in all of that. I, I just it's just beautiful. Yeah. Uh, any thought? Any words for our viewers? Anything you want to let them know? I think uh, you've got nothing but doors opening on this channel. You got doors opening to topics, ideas, passions that you can't even imagine. So this is uh, get ready to blast off is what I would say with Avi. Get ready to blast off because this is going to be a fun trip. It was named from Yukon to San Juan, so put your hands together for a wonderful, talented human being. Last name, Anderson. First name, John. John, welcome, my friend, to the <laughs> TKN Celebrity Tournament. Well, thank you so much for having me. And uh, like so many others in the intro and now, uh, let me applaud your dexterity with the language. Uh, <laughs> Lives. Uh, John, I have to ask you this question before we bring in our next participant. Sure. Are you here to win the entire tournament? So I listened to those people, and I just thought, okay, mm -hmm. for a guy who covers marathons yes. often and frequently, and it's my favorite part of the job in 25 years, covering the New York Marathon and the Boston Marathon, which comes up here soon, why would I not want to be able to go from marathon to Athens and trace the original steps yes. of the marathon? I mean, let's go. <laughs> I don't have uh, Phidippides here with me, obviously. He's <laughs> broke. But uh, beyond that, I like I feel like I uh, like everybody else should just surrender on the spot for no other reason. Than that. <laughs> I salute him for his heart, authenticity and countless good deeds. So put your hands together with about as much enthusiasm as you can muster and give it up for a humble, kind, talented human being. Last name Douglas, first name Buster. Buster Douglas, welcome to the TKN Celebrity Tournament, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Oscar, Grammy, Tony, Emmy, Golden Globe, AMA, WGA, and Olympians all competing for the pride of the prize. Would you like to be the one that wins it all? Would you want to win this entire thing, Mr. Douglas? Most definitely. Most definitely. I love it, guys. And it's much cooler than Tony Stark. So please put your hands together for a legendary human being and friend. Last name, Henry. First name, Mark. Mark, welcome, my friend. What's going on, brother? Listen, let me tell you something. <laughs> I love the intros, but I'm going to tell you something about wealth. The greatest wealth is when you can share it with someone. You can share your victories. You can share your failure. You can express your deepest feelings, but the greatest wealth is to be able to say that I have a friend and I feel a unbelievable uh, level of wealth. Uh, and a lot of that is because I have somebody like you. Can you please describe James, the most eventful, memorable and impactful week of your life you could begin with a tagline that captures the very essence of that week i would like to say it would be fight him or fight me it was one day i was i was 10 year old coming home from school i came home and i was crying my mother asked me what was wrong and i told her that this kid had been bothering me for about a week looking for her to comfort me and she did just the opposite her own way she grabbed me and told me to stand up for myself that was the start of my boxing career <laughs> it, was long, it was a long week of consistent bullying my mother made me told me either you know fight him or fight me and i went back out there and you know stood up to the guy and never looked back you know lula that's my mother's name lula pearl douglas was a tough woman. She loved her kids and loved her family and enjoyed, you know, watching us grow up to be strong individuals. Of course, I could not, you know, beat my mother. So <laughs> it was, that was the most impactful week of my life. You know, it changed my life. It put me on a course that I was on to this day to be upstanding and straightforward and a, a go-getter. Uh, so I guess my tagline would be jumpstart. 
And I was playing, all I did growing up, my whole life was sports, everything I did. I was, whether I was playing in the street, playing tackle the bum, wiffle, but whatever. And I, but I started to grow in my junior year in high school and I'm on the tennis team. I was not a great tennis player. I was like the 13th man on the tennis team to play. So in the interim, I walked over to the track and my good friend, Terry Nickish was a high jumper on that team. And when I was a kid, I wanted to be Dwight Stones, who was the greatest high jumper in the world. I was over there jumping and now I just was beating him consistently. And so I was not in a hurry to go back to tennis practice. And the track coach came by one day and he just like, who are you? Like, who's this guy that's just over here beating the guy that's my high jumper? And then my senior year, I had an unbelievable, I went out the next year, my senior year, and was great at it. Had the second best jump in the height in the state. So then I ended up in Missouri and I ended up with what is the first and best journalism school in the country. It goes through Tulsa and goes through Phoenix and ends up at ESPN. And then when ESPN says, you know what, one day, this happens to all of us, they say, there's no more money. This is as much as we can pay. And they say, is there anything else you want to do? And I said, well, I've, I've kind of always loved track all my life. And um, so if there's any way I can cover track. And so now, out of that, I cover last week, the NCAA championships. I do the Boston Marathon, the New York Marathon, SEC championships. And so this whole full circle for being a really lousy tennis player and being good enough to jump a little bit ends up here I am. I mean, my whole life has changed uh, because I go over there and I jump a little bit and it turns out I'm okay at it. And it literally sets me on my whole career path. And here you are, long, illustrious career, able to give back because you won the lotto years and years ago by not having a good forehand and backhand. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you select if you could select a historical fin figure for each night? Mr. Buster Douglas, you will go first when you are ready, good sir. Friday night karaoke with the beautiful and famous Aretha Franklin. Oh. I was raised on listening to her music weekly every Friday night. My mother would clean the house and sing along with Aretha and her music going and my mother would get you going. And my mother would sing and dance to it. My father would sing along with her, do a two-step. They would dance in the living room together. Now, Saturday night debate competition with another number 44 as the same as my college basketball number. None other than President Barack Obama. President Barack Obama is an impressive man, a dynamic speaker, critical thinker, and a great debater. I would be the muscle to knock out, knock, knock it out the box with Barack. Cruising down the Gulf of Mexico, fighting the fishing and hanging out with the great Jack Johnson. Talking about his defeat and becoming the first African-American heavyweight champion of the world. Jack sharing the challenges of his time and as a black man and me sharing my story of being allowed to fight the invincible Iron Mike Tyson, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. No one thought I could do it, but little did they know I came to fight and get it done and did it. And I too noted in many sports arenas as the greatest upset in sports history. Mr. Mr. John Anderson, um, Friday night is karaoke. Saturday night's a debate competition. Sunday's a relaxing time in the boat as you're fishing. Good, sir, the floor is yours whenever you are ready. Uh, thank God I only have to go three rounds with the former heavyweight champion of the world because I want no part of you for 12. <laughs> I want to go, uh, go to karaoke with Frank Sinatra, who is decidedly not a karaoke singer. Uh, I think if he came, then inevitably I'd hang out with Dean Martin, which would be great. So I just think we'd start small, we'd be in some dive, we'd do karaoke, but I think the night itself would expand for the debate. Uh, but I want to hang out with Thomas Jefferson. Both A, I think he's a brilliant man. He is, you know, we're here in this republic because of him. I would love to hear him answer some of the things that he put in um, to our document that, that, you know, that we have to answer for. Unbelievably smart guy who did so much and give him a chance to defend his personal failing with owning slave with Sally Hemings. Sally Hemings. So the man has personal failings to answer for, and I would like to get those answers from him in a modern world. And then the third one's really tricky, Avi. There is nothing I hate worse in the world than fishing. I would do about anything than fish. Fishing isn't really a sport because the other side doesn't know it's playing. So I've never been a fisherman, 
at all. And as it turns out, my father, my paternal father, loved nothing more than to fish. He left me a John boat. He left me tackle. I have no doubt if I had grown up with him, I would do nothing more than love to fish. I'm going to fish with Hemingway because he wrote about it so well. And he was out there. And again, a little like Frank Sinatra, I'm going to end up in Key West. I'm going to have too much rum. It's not going to end beautifully uh, in the end, but boy, am I going to have great stories. I'm going to go, I'm going to go uh, sing with Frank. I'm going to debate with uh, Thomas Jefferson and, uh, and then I'm going to go with Hemingway and we're just going to get crazed. Um, the worst thing I always hated as a kid was having to explain that he was my stepdad and we'd had a different name. And the most telling story I have about him in this, is when I was maybe five, uh, my mom asked if he would like to adopt my sister and I. And uh, I have step brothers and step sisters that live with us. And he looked at her and he said no. And he said, because I love them like they are mine, but they should have their dad's last name. He's an Anderson. He wanted to ask um, Thomas Jefferson about why he made the decisions. But, you know, like he, he has, a, I think, 42 African-American children yes. uh, in America. So, like, um, you can see why he wanted to change some things. But why did you make that decision? And, and I got a lot of uh, I, the history thing. It, it got me. You're giving us our hearts and souls. John, it was, is it always best to seek out pleasure over avoiding pain? And whenever you are ready, good sir, the floor is yours. <laughs> I am all for avoiding pain, period. Now, so I don't know if that puts me in the camp of also seeking pleasure over it, um, but I've seen enough pain in my life between watching or hear my mom talk about uh, my dad. I've seen a, uh, an engagement breakup and I've been through a lot of painful stuff and I think I would rather uh, avoid pain myself. Sometimes, I'll leave it at this, uh, sometimes I just would like life to cooperate with me and me cooperate with it. And I think that's the middle of it. Am I seeking pleasure? Am I avoiding pain? If I can just get life to cooperate with me every day, that's where I'd like to be. Question I have for Mr. Douglas is, what's something that you've let go of that has positively impacted your life? Pearling, or, or others call it roller skating. I don't know why I gave up pearling. I began pearling at a very young age. I started in the streets and roller skates. Those were fun times falling here and there and everywhere. Remember my first time at the roller land on Main Street and 18th, wide open floor with an awesome sound system. Allow me to really learn how to skate and eventually able to pearl. When I say pearl, I mean really getting down, slipping and sliding across the floor. I mean, the, it's like riding a bike. To this day, I still have, a, have my skates and consider myself a master skater. And I have a pair of skates now that I've rebuilt Pair of nice pair of Chicago's that uh, I'm looking forward to one day going back out there, venturing back out there and giving it another go. It's, you know, on your, without using a bumper. And you can bend your knees a little bit more, more flexibility. You know, it's a Columbus, Ohio thing. You know, we really get down. We really get into it. I like it. I like it. Well, I, I tell you what, uh, because of that understanding is why I'm going with you. Uh, because I would want the bumper on it because stopping is very, very important. <laughs> <laughs> and considering yourself an expert, like um, I, I have to, I have to go with uh, James Buster Douglas. Wow! Unless uh, something breaks the count, guys, it's a ten, nine, eight, seven, six. There's a five and a four. You know, there's a three and a two and one and a zero. So, oh, guys and gals and pals, with a final score of sixty-seven to sixty-seven. Both John Anderson and James Buster Douglas move on to the second round in a few months of the Celebrity Tournament. We're going to see them again. We're going to see John Anderson and Mr. Douglas in round two.